Hello and welcome to episode 23 of The Final Whistle. I'm your host, Drew Ziegler, and I'm here with Steven Kubis. Today, we are going to talk all about the NBA and NHL playoffs, and as well as some recent boxing matches. So, in the NBA playoffs, there's been a lot of blowouts. The series aren't too close. Denver just swept the Lakers 4-0, and it just seemed like Jokic, he was his MVP self in that series, and the Lakers just had no answer for him. I mean, this is why Jokic should have won an MVP for the third straight year because I don't know how you give the MVP to an Embiid and then he plays like that in the playoffs and now you have Jokic come out here every day. It's like a, a, well, he's a walking triple-double. No matter, like, he might score, like, 10 points, but then he'll also have, like, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. Like, he's just everything you want on like as a teammate, as a, as a coach, as a player, whatever. He's just really good. And then you have the Nuggets who are – I was watching the game. They just, like – they just don't let the Lakers go away with it. Like they they keep punching, punching, and punching, even though the lead was pretty big. And then they were kept chipping away. And then suddenly it's, we're all tied up. And then, you know, they obviously take the lead at the end and then stop LeBron from the game-tying shot. But it, it was honestly huge because this is really proving the Nuggets are going for it this year, and they really want it badly. Yeah, their team is built very well around Jokic. Jamal Murray in that series averaged around 32 points per game. And Aaron Gordon with a big game, and also Contavious Caldwell Pope, a shooter. So they've got the supporting cast for Jokic, and I think this could finally be their year. It's the first time in franchise history they've even made it to the finals, let alone win one. And the Lakers now, there's a question will LeBron James retire? Do you think that's real, or what do you think? Uh, no shot. He retires. I think he still wants to play with his son. If it, even if it's like a year or two, I think he still wants to play with his son. I mean, he's only got to wait. So we got to play like one more season if Bronny only goes one now in college. But I, I don't know. I think he might choose a different team, you know. I don't know. I think I don't think Bronny's going to be a high draft pick. No offense to him. But, like, I think he might be like a late first round, if anything. So I think LeBron's going to try to, like, get one, try to join one of those teams that are going to have a late round first first pick because if he joins, like, the, the Spurs or something, like, Bronny's not going there, or the Rockets. He's got to pick a team that's, like, pretty average to, like, okay, so they can draft Bronny, too. But I think it's definitely going to lead a persuaded team into drafting Bronny if they want to sign LeBron because that dance to be the one, like, the if that LeBron's going to tell them when he signs. But I think he's going to leave the Lakers and not retire. I think he could possibly take a year off and then come back. I don't know what the rules are for that, if he has to come back and play for the Lakers or not, but we'll have to see. And also, I think something interesting could be, is Bronny drafted earlier just with the thought that LeBron comes to that team? And we'll just have to see in two years when if he comes out after one year. And with Boston now to the east, the Boston Celtics are down 3-1 to the Miami Heat who have probably been the best playoff performers in the playoffs this year. I mean, the Celtics have been looking terrible all of this playoffs, and it's really strong. But, I mean, J Jalen Brown did say, don't give us one. They got the one they needed. So I, w I wonder what's going to happen with that. If anything, there's no way I think the Heat blow this, but I could potentially see this going to game six or game seven and Heat still winning it because the Heat are just on fire. I mean, they're the reason why they're winning is because they're lights out from the three-pointer. Like, everybody, like, even nobody's on their bench are coming out nailing threes. It's just unbelievable seeing every shot go in, especially when you watch the old Knicks series. Knicks couldn't defend the three, and now this this series, they couldn't even defend the three either. I think the problem with the Celtics are they're guarding Jimmy Butler with too many guys when they have, like, Gabe Vincent or Duncan Robinson. They're the ones that are shooting the hot ball right now. You know, Jimmy Butler, I mean, yeah, he's Jimmy Butler, but – all these other key players are going, are doing way are doing not way better, but doing better in the games than Jimmy are points wise. And I think they need to like see that more and adjust to it. Yeah, they're going out to Jimmy Butler, which is leaving the other guys open. And when they do try and guard the three, that means there's somebody wide open under the basket. And the Heat just have a perfect plan for success in this series. And the Celtics, I think they could get it to seven, but Jimmy Butler, he doesn't seem too concerned. He was laughing on the bench after like towards the end of the game when he wasn't in. And I think the Heat are still going to pull it out and we'll have a Heat and Denver matchup in the finals. And is that your prediction also for the finals? Who would uh, you think would win? Um, Yeah, I think the Denver Nuggets will win that. Because I, I, it's really hard seeing who would match up with Jokic. Because he just played AD and he's like making AD look like a bit. Like he made him look like a baby, you know. And it's hard to see. Like, I think Bam has a skill to do it, but he's just like – the man's shooting, like, shots, like, over his head. Yeah. It's going in. Like, how are you going to guard that? Like, you really can't guard him. Plus, he's not a shot-first type of guy. He's like a 
he's a pass first in my opinion. I think he looks. I think he looks at the rim and then he drives in, but then he kicks out to a corner. You have Porter for a three, or Murray for a three, or Pope for a three. So I think that's the reason why the Nuggets are going to win it. Yeah, I think the Nuggets are also going to win the championship this year, and we'll just have to see. So now we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, James will join me to talk about the NHL playoffs. So now we're back, and we got the NHL playoffs, and just like the NBA, they're these series are not close. They are surprising, but not close. And in the West, we got the Vegas Golden Knights up 3-0 on the Dallas Stars. Vegas just dominating this series. They just have everything better than Dallas, and it's showing in this series. Yeah, the first two games were close, but I think what's happening now is the Stars, after a loss, are not bouncing back like they did all regular season. I, th- I think Andre hasn't looked sharp at all. I think the Knights are just taking advantage of everything. I mean, the, the, the Stars, almost. I mean, they should have won game two if they didn't give up that goal with two minutes left and then game three is just a blowout so I mean that th- in that game two that that was a star's chance to really you know get back into the series and they just couldn't do it and, I mean and, and with Andre not playing well I, the, I don't think the starts team is good enough to offensively to really come back and I think Jamie Ben taking that cross-checking penalty game misconduct I mean that was really stupid I mean you're one of the best players on their team down 2-0 it's a must-win game, and you just can't take that, especially as a veteran player. Yeah, while a guy is down, he's cross-checking him, and I think that's the whole story of this series. It's just showing the frustration that he has. And I think you mentioned a stat an uh, episode or two ago about Anger. After a loss, he's like one of the best goalies in the league, and that's just not happening in this series. And now over to the East, the Florida Panthers just... What a crazy ride this has been in the playoffs for them. They're up 3-0 on the Carolina Hurricanes now. Hurricanes showing their frustration after that game three. They were breaking sticks in the locker room, and it's just nobody can stop the Panthers right now. Yeah, I mean, one 5-5 five and five goal for the Canes, I mean, that's, that's why they're down 3-0. I, I don't think, I mean, that's bad, but I think defensively they've been pretty good. Every game has been a one-goal game, so I think it's just – pretty unfortunate for the Hurricanes but I mean you can't take credit away from the Panthers I mean could, I mean we got a four overtime game in game one and in like two in the morning Kachuk and then game two scoring a game when to go by Kachuk I mean this this is just a dream playoff run for the Panthers you take out the best team of all time arguably the Leafs who are very solid and the Hurricanes who could arguably you say is the top three team in the league I mean, this is really, you know, one of the best playoff runs in all sports we've seen in a long time. So it's very impressive. And Bobrovsky shut out in Game Three. I mean, he, he's he. I think he's the most important reason why the Panthers are in the spot they are right now. Yeah, the Panthers drove the Maple Leafs GM out of his position, Kyle Dubas, and he's fired. And now he's looking for jobs. And that just seemed that's just what the Panthers do to other teams now. And I think that's their game is getting a lead and then relying on Sergei Bobrovsky to hold it. And that seems to be working right now. And we'll see how it happens if they, assuming they win this series, and we'll see how many games it goes in. But what do you think is your uh, Stanley Cup prediction, assuming the Knights and Florida Panthers win their series? Yeah, I think they're both going to win. I'm I'm going to ride with the Panthers. I, you were a little surprised when I took them over. The, I said I was going to take them over the Hurricanes. I think they're going to beat the Golden Knights in six games. I think uh, I'm not really too worried about you know, their seed right now. I think they're just playing too good of as a hockey team to not win the series. So I, I, th- I think the Panthers are going to win in six games in front of their home crowd. I still think the Panthers are not going to win this. I'm just really high on the Golden Knights. They seem to be like a top team in the West every year. And I think they're going to finally finish this, finish it this year after falling to the Capitals a few years back. So now we're going to take a short break, and John's going to come up to talk about some boxing. So now we're back, and John has joined me. And in 12 thrilling rounds, Devin Haney defeated Vasily Lomachenko by unanimous decision. And just give some analysis on it. And do you think it was close, or Haney definitely came out on top? I think Lomachenko won. I think that he came out in those later rounds and just beat up Haney. But I think that Haney has the bigger name, so they gave him the unanimous decision win. And I know that Lomachenko and his team are appealing the win. They want to they wanna get that back. So, I mean, I'm interested to see how that plays out. But I think Lomachenko uh, did more to deserve the win than Haney did in that fight. So there was another fight, and there's more people who think Loma got robbed in this one. Do you think that's true? Yeah, definitely. I think Loma definitely got robbed in this one. It was just a thing with the guy with the bigger name kind of got the win. 
and there were just some fights announced. First up on July 29th, July 29th, there's two: Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje, and it's for the two BMF belt. So who do you got in that? Uh, I mean, Jorge Masvidal putting uh, he retired, putting the BMF belt back up on the line. And I think that Poirier is going to win that fight. Uh, I think Gaethje's kind of past his prime, even though he's still just a living highlight reel. Uh, I think Poirier is just more of the uh, younger, better fighter uh, up to this point, and I got Poirier in that fight. And the undercard of that fight is Han Blankowitz versus Alex Perara, and is that going to be close, or who do you got in that? I mean, it's Pajeda's first fight at light heavyweight, so that's... Uh, definitely something interesting and if Pajeda wins this he will have beaten Adesanya three times and will also have beaten the only guy to ever beat Adesanya besides himself so that's something to look at yeah. and Pajeda uh he's definitely a great fighter Jan Vlahovic is going towards the end of the his of his career and Pajeda's just really starting his so I mean it's his first fight at light heavyweight and this is definitely a good challenge so this fight can really go both ways yeah that'll opinion. be cool to see like a veteran and a rookie almost mm -hmm. and Soon after, on August 19th, we have Alamin Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley, obviously a big name, but I think it'll be a close fight, and who do you have in it? I mean, I got Sean O'Malley in this. I got him taking the belt away from Sterling. I think that he just has arguably the best hands in all of MMA, and uh, I think his reach is just going to be too uh, big for Aljo to stop. So that'll do it for on episode 23 of The Final Whistle, and we'll see you next time for episode 24.